So in first episode, we have done the setup and the installation. We have created project also. I have explained what are the different files we have, what are it important, what do we do with this file? How do we run the project, right? Again, in the installation, Node.js installation, VS code and installing the Angular CLI. And how do you create a project? So project creation is NGNU and the project name. Again, you get three questions asked, you need to answer that, then your project gets created. So this is what we have covered in the first episode. Now, moving on. Today, we are going to discuss component, everything, what should we know, what are component, how do we create component and everything we are going to discuss. Fine. So when we create Angular project, by default, we get one component that is our app component. So as I explained in the previous episode that previously component file name used to be like component dot app dot component dot html app dot component dot dot ts app dot component dot css. But that component word now got removed. That was making more sense, but they removed it. I don't know like what thought process they had, but they have removed the naming convention now. So now it is just app.ts, app.html, app.cs. Now I have to create the component. So when we talk about component for now, you can consider components are nothing but pages, right? If you know HTML and CSS, so, or if you are, if you belong from .NET or the Java background, so whatever we used to create normal HTML pages. So if you have to create one more page into our Angular application, so what you will do, you will create a component. Fine. So in app folder, whatever the code we are going to do, that will be in our app folder. So right, right click on the app folder. Let's create a folder inside it. So here I will say components. Okay. So just a folder I have created. Now we have to open a command prompt or terminal on this folder. So right click open in integrated terminal. So we are just opening a command prompt on this particular folder. See the path. Now we have to create the component. So in Angular, you remember when we installed the Angular, we installed Angular CLI. So for creating project also, we have used the command ng new. So for from project creation to whatever the things we have in Angular, everything we create by the commands. So that is Angular CLI command. So now how do we create? So ng generate what we need to generate component. So component, let's say user component I'm creating, enter. So this is the command to create your component, ng generate component user. So what it has done, it has created four files. So in component folder, it has, you can see it has created a user folder and all the four file for a particular component that you can see CSS, HTML, spec.ts, this is got testing and user.component.ts. Fine, either, you can put it as a long form or there is a shortcut also. So ng, g for generate, c for component. Let's say admin, enter. So now you can see we have got the same output, but either you can write the full form or you can write the short form also. Fine. So now you can see in component folder, we have got two component, admin and the user. In every component, we have got same set of file. Okay. Now, as I said, in Angular, everything whatever you see will come from the component only. So how component is a building block of our Angular application. Very important thing we have in Angular that is component. Now in component, we have got minimum three files, CSS, HTML, and .ts. So why do we have three files? Consider or imagine you have a normal HTML file. Let me open another thing. So consider this is your page. Just a minute. This is your normal HTML page or let's see this for loop. So this is your normal HTML page. So your code will go into the script tag. Your HTML will go over here. And if you want to write some style that will go in the style section, right here, you create the classes dot primary or something like this, right? So in your HTML page, your coding JavaScript coding will go into the script tag or this we can move it into separate file also like main.js or something. Again, CSS, either you can have it in style or you can have a separate CSS file also. Then you need to load it and your HTML will be over here. Consider this and now you can compare with your component. So in component, you got a separate file for CSS. You got a separate file for keeping your HTML and you got a separate file for your code. So while working in Angular, we normally work with TypeScript. So that's why you can see .ts. So .ts is an extension for TypeScript file. Just like .js is there for JavaScript, .ts is for TypeScript. Fine. So while working in Angular, we work with TypeScript. 
But again, as I'm repeating, you don't have to learn TypeScript separately. What are the basic things? Because we don't use so many things. And TypeScript is another language, right? But we don't use all the things from TypeScript. Again, whatever we know from the JavaScript, it still says, stays the same in TypeScript also. If condition, for loop, array, object, whatever you know from JavaScript, it stays same as over here also. Fine. Now, so as I said, component will consist of a three file, CSS file, HTML file and the .ts file. So you code, you will write it over here in the .ts. Your HTML will go over here and your CSS classes will go over here. Fine. So now how this all, these are all three files. So how they are connected. So you can see in admin.component.ts, we have this something called decorator. So here you get the reference of those files. See admin.html, admin.css. So this is how all three files work as a single file they are they are grouped together like these are all related so here it is the mention of all of that so this is your component decorator so component decorator is like a information about this component or metadata the right technical word is metadata about the class ultimately this is a class so above the class we have some decorator so this is this will help you to identify like this class is a component class Okay, again, I will go through the decorators also like what exactly you need to explain when it comes to the interview. But for now, you can consider some additional information we are adding about this class over here. Fine. Now, every component will have a selector. See, in the component decorator, we have some properties. So, selector is like something unique every component will have. In case of admin, it is app-admin. Let's open the user.ts. In case of user, you can see app-user. Like everyone has a name, right? Just like that, every component will have something unique. It's selector, fine. So we have created two components. Now we have already run the application. Now if I see, or let me show you first HTML. So in admin.html, you can see admin page is there. Let's add H1 also. Admin page, something HTML I'm adding. And in user, I will add a text box. input type text placeholder name see we have two component admin component and admin component html we have a p tag and h1 tag in user component we have a p tag and a text box i am saving it also but those com those html whatever the components we have created ui is not rendering over here right so to render the UI, we have to render this component over here in the app component because by default your app component is the parent component that is only loading. See H2 we are getting. So now if I add a table over here, let me just add a table. TR, TD, again second TD we will have. And let's add a style also, style with 100%. Fine. So you have a HTML table inside first TD, you will add the admin component. So how do you render this admin component into our app component? So by using its selector. So this is my selector name. So let's copy this app.html, but it is giving error. So if you see what is the error, it is saying like app admin is not a known element. Okay. So if in one component, see app component is also another component. So if you want to render one component into another component, you need to import that class into its class. See, this is your app component HTML and this is your app component .ts. So here you get import array. So now here you need to import our admin component. So admin component class. So this is your admin component class name. Enter. Okay. So now if you go to HTML, see now you don't have error. Let's save all and let's check. So now here you can see after H1, you get to see something. Now this is coming from your admin component. Now, just like this admin component, I have one more TD. In second TD, I will add user component. So again, if you have to use, use the user component, you need to import it. So add app component.ts, user.ts like this. Now here you can have app hyphen. What was the selector? User. See, this was the selector and that I have added it over here. Let's save it and check it now. See, 
user component is coming over here. Okay, so we created two components and those two components are available over here. One is the admin component and another is the user component. So for now, unless we have not seen the routing, we have we are going to render the component like this by using their selector. Okay, so now from seven from Angular 17, we got something standalone component. By default, now all components are standalone. Okay, previously in, in 17, we had the property like in component decorator, standalone is there. We can make it as false or true also. Previously in 17, we had this property, but from 18, they removed it. By default, all components are standalone now, but that property is still there. Okay, so standalone means whatever it needs, it has everything over here only. Either you are using some another uh, forms module, the HTTP module, everything, whatever you are going to use in this particular component, it will be over here only. It doesn't depend on any another thing in your Angular application. Whatever it needs, it has everything inside this. That's the meaning of standalone. Okay. Whatever it needs, it has everything inside that only. So that is your standalone component. Previously, uh, in the older version, when we used to have app module, so whenever a component is created, that entry got added to the app module in declaration section. But as I said, we don't have app module now, we have app config. But app config, what do we have? Just the provider array services we inject over here, nothing else. So all the components are independent. They don't need to be added it anywhere. Okay. But let's say one component you want to use in another, you need to import it like this, then you can use it. Okay. So this is your component. Now let's move ahead a little bit. So as we have created component, let's try to create some variable. In JavaScript also we used to create variable. So how do you create variable over here in that component? So as we say in Angular, while we work with TypeScript. So how do you, whatever the things you know from JavaScript, it is same as same at is, but just little bit syntax changes are there. Let's say you have to create a variable in JavaScript. What you do where first name is equal to value you give it over here like this you create a variable in javascript but when you work with typescript you don't need this where this is how you create the variable as i said na, it is almost same just little bit syntax different right so you don't need where over here directly variable name and equal to end the variable name you can provide so this is first name let's say course name is equal to angular 20 tutorial so see in admin component i have created two variables in first variable i have stored the string data in second variable also i have stored the string data just like that roll number is equal to 111 okay i have stored integer type of data like whatever the data types you know now string number boolean and our date same data types are over here also undefined null again whatever extra you know array object same things over here nothing extra is there whatever you know from javascript it still stays the same that's why i'm saying you don't need to waste time learning typescript separately okay we are going to cover whatever we need over here only now so you can see we have created three variable now in javascript let's say you have a variable and in that variable you have some data how do you render that data into your html First, you select an element by using document got get element by ID, then inner text, and you provide the variable. But in Angular, let's say you want to display the value of first name in the HTML. So in app, so in admin component, we have created this variable. So in admin.html only, you can access this. So let's say I'm creating a span, and inside span, I will use double curly braces. So this is what called interpolation. Again, we are going to say it properly in data binding, but for now, I have in admin.ts, I have created this variable and this variable, I'm able to access it over here. See now, I got Chetan over here. So what that variable has the value, that value is available over here. Clear? So this is how we render a variable. You create a variable, you store some value and in HTML, you can render that variable value by directly using the interpolation. Okay. Now, in admin.component, I have created this variable. If I try to access this course name variable in my user component, I'm getting an error. What the error is? It is saying property or variable course name does not exist on the user. It is saying in user component.ts, I am not able to find any property with that name. So how you are able to access it? It's like 
you are trying to access a variable which you have not declared okay so the meaning is if you create some variable into one component those variable you can access in that component html file only not in another component html okay same as over here also in admin component we have three variable first name course name full name uh, roll number let's say if i try to access full name now in admin component.ts we don't have any variable with the full name so same error i'm getting saying full name does not exist on the admin because in my admin component.ts i don't have a variable with this full name right so whatever the variable you create in one component those variable you can access in that component html only not in another component html clear right so just like you created a one script tag and you are using that script tag in a one html page so you can access those variable in that same html page only not in another same rule follows over here also okay so this is what everything you should know about the basic of component so component will have again one more thing i forgot so let's say in admin component you created a class let's say i'm giving a name as primary color sorry let's say color i'm storing as red in primary component i have created a class primary color now this i will add it over here okay let's remove this and from user also you will remove this so see what i have done in admin component css i have created a class this class i am using it in the admin also see it is adding a red color let me show you the inspect also okay so see this class we have added so it is able to find that class also right which is coming from our admin css now this class if i try to access in my user html on this paragraph let's say now if we see over here that class is over here but it is not coming over here again the same thing so whatever the css whatever the classes you create over here those will be available over here only you cannot access class created in one component into another okay just like variable whatever the variable you create those you are going to access into your that component html only same way whatever the css you create over here that you can access in this html only not in another component html so that's what standalone you can say whatever it needs it has everything it there only okay so that is component so you got separate file for storing your css you got separate file to store your html you got separate file to write your code fine so this is everything you should know about the component again in next episode we will discuss data binding so what we saw over here now interpolation right so again there are so many ways how we can bind the data in from whatever the variable you have created what value you have how do you bind into the html that is the topic data binding so again we are going to have a dedicated episode for that but for now this is component so now for practice you can create multiple component you can create multiple variable try to render it by using interpolation and in your app component you can render it by its using selector this is what you can do for now okay so tomorrow again we will i will be releasing one more episode that will be on the data binding for now if you are new please do like the group i have mentioned i have around 7000 people already joined almost everyone is working we take so many live sessions also so just to get notified of those just join the group and if you are new please do like and subscribe thank you